grabs that thing down, grabs him out of that tree, and we all, we're just sitting there, Bill's got him on the ground, pats him, pats him, and we were just like, what the hell, I, I, I was, I killed him. Yeah, yeah, he killed yeah, me. He yeah, killed yeah, me. Yeah, and sure enough, we sat there, and after a long enough time, Possum starts looking around. Yeah. Looking he around, played and Possum. And he gets up, looks at all of us, and he goes, <laughs> and took off. And uh, it's just moments like those, you know, uh, with Chris. He always was, you know, my, my Uncle Chris. I would call him Uncle Chris my entire life. But, I love him to death. I love Aunt Jams. Uh, and there's not enough. I can't say enough. You know, Chris, is, Chris is an amazing person. And, and, and he'll be with us forever, you know. And, uh, thanks for everybody coming out. Debs, get up there. I could say is I wouldn't have this place if it wasn't for Chris. And he would tell you. Wait, he would tell me that every day. He would tell me that every day. None of us would be down there if it wasn't for me. He came to stay with him. Nobody no, I gave him several stories to talk And none of you damn Pattersons would have this place if it wasn't for me. <laughs> After me now, I'm gonna let Mary Lou tell their story, before, okay. or else Hog Hog tells it real oh, well. Oh, I know. Tell Hog to do it. But yeah. we brought yes. Mr. Janet and Chris down here many years ago, <laughs> and uh, they came down to our other lot that used to be Fontaine's lot. Right. And after we brought them down that weekend, they were hooked. They wanted to buy a four-wheeler. They wanted to get a camper. Next thing you know, Chris's boss had a place in Bent Tree he didn't ever go to. And here we are. But uh, they got it. And a little while later, it got real hectic up there where Fontaine's place is now. So they wanted us to buy the place next door down here. We could get our own little tight-knit community. Lo and behold, yep. here we are, retired, built, living, living the living good the life, right. living the dream. <laughs> the dream. <laughs> but uh, Chris was a large part of all of that, yeah. and uh, we're really thankful to have Chris and Janet been in our lives for 35 plus years. As long as you keep your yard mowed. Yeah, I will keep yours <laughs> mowed and enjoy his mowed, and keep the killed, and we'll do the best we can. <laughs> Damn yeah, hard time, Deb. Just crack another top. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so anyway, on a lighter note, um, haven't, haven't gotten Chris and Janet down here, and them haven't gotten everybody else after that. Bud and Deb and Jeannie and uh, Jill and Jamie and the whole crew and all of their friends and their friends' friends. Uh, yeah, that's true. I wanted to get on a softer note. I just wanted to be at least someone here that would maybe say it's some kind of little funeral verse or something. I've been looking over a lot of different ones this week. And I found one that was rather appropriate. So, here goes. God looked around his garden and found an empty place. He then looked down upon the earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and he lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He knew that you were suffering, and he knew you were in pain. He knew that you would never get well on earth again. He saw the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, Peace be thine. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. I just want you to rest in peace, CP. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And to end, a little Irish in some of this. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon our land. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. We love you, Pattersons, every damn last one of you. <laughs> Be a little hard ass on us. So us girls come down for a girl weekend. 
Somehow he decided oh, yeah. he was going to come down because by God he was going to come down here and keep an eye on us. So he comes over and he made us a fish fry. Cooked it, cooked it, and says that he did it all. Mowed Jill's grass. We did it. And we were all Don't like, you ever forget it. What the hell is going on? <laughs> and uh, he took us out riding. Awesome. Yeah. That's when Carol, and he insisted Carol went with him. He insisted <laughs> that our little short redhead friend Chris, or Carol, ride with him. And then he let her drive it. And we had two redheads in a the razor together. That was a scary situation. <laughs> but it was a great time. Great time. Yeah. Thanks, Monica. Yeah. Yeah. I was friends with Chris forever, Chris and Janet. The first time that I met him, we was having a barbecue. Go closer, Hawk. Go closer. We was having a barbecue down at our place. Good lord. Yeah, you want to come tell this story? Yeah, You want to come tell this story? How's that? Goat head. Goat head. I had an uncle, he was kind of a jokester, and he'd got me an apron made. And how many kids? Oh, we got some kids in the crowd. It's okay. Plug your ears. Don't be fine. Air mugs. Air buffs. Air mugs. Believe me, I'm not going to hear it. These kids have heard it all. Underneath this apron, if you lift it up, it was anatomically correct when you picked it up. So it's the first time I've met Chris and Janet. I was standing out there and I was asking if they wanted to come down. We're going to have a barbecue. They said, yeah, Chris and Janet were standing there looking at me. So I grabbed the apron and went to wipe my hands and picked it up. And I asked Chris, or asked Chris and Janet how they liked their meat cooked. <laughs> So that's the apron story. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What a way to introduce yourself, Mom. Yeah, yeah really. What a call. You've got some stories, too? Yeah. You've got so many stories. I can't think of them. How many times did you go like that? All the time! Actually, you know what I sold in that property over there. There's a property here. None of us would have had this place to go up there. I agree that. I'm not Uncle Chris since we were 18. <laughs> we used to play football at Lake Chamorro, you know, well, I guess it was Prairie League, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It was more than yeah. one. We used to go to baseball games and get trashed and house thrown out. Get thrown out. out. <laughs> like, yeah, get thrown yeah. out. And yeah. Get like, arrested. It seems like there was no door on the van <laughs> one time. Yeah. 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 almost fell out in the lawn chair. Oh, and oh, 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 from Sedalia because we oh my god. Oh no! Oh, no. 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 O
You might be a pain in the ass. Be like, I know what I did for you. Don't you forget it. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Always there. I know. Always Don't there. Always there. Always there. Always there. Always Always there. 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 You did great, Aunt Joy. All right, Debs. Yeah, put the mic in front of Debbie. <laughs> Janet and Chris's first date. Yes. She went out with him because he gave her a quailing. <laughs> to pick her up at her dad's house and he brought two pounds of hamburger and five pounds of cheese. <laughs> I that was awesome. That was awesome. Nice <laughs> Mama. So here I am, freshman year of high school. Hey, so get in the microphone. Yeah, get in the microphone. Everybody else. Get, 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 get in the microphone. Come on, Chuck. I said he got that from Debs. Now we can hear him. Now we can hear him. Exactly. So anyway, here I am, freshman year of high school. Don't know shit for Christmas, right? I'm walking into health class. You know, uh, they're going through the roster. Hey, this, 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 and uh, Coach O'Connor gets to Patterson. He looks at, he says, Patterson. Hmm. Uh oh. Which one do you belong to? I said, Excuse me. He says, uh, Well, I want to know how this year's gonna go. I said, uh, which one are you? you? You Tim's boy? Or you Chris's boy? And I said neither. I said uh, Bud's my dad. You know. Uh, well, dad, yeah. Dad. Anyway, what I said is Bud's my dad, and he says, "Well, I don't know Bud, but I tell you what, I know your uncle Chris very well, and I know your uncle Tony fairly well too. So I ain't never met nobody Lasting tougher memories. than some bitches." But he said, "Whenever I got to know them, I knew exactly where they stood, which which hand they threw, they threw punches with, the, the whole demeanor." He said that uh, I knew what I was getting every time I talked to him. Either he was going to get into a fight with him. Or we're gonna go walk into the principal's office and out the door in there. So, uh, I don't know. It was just one of those things. When I was a freshman. I didn't know. I, like I said, I didn't know shit for Frisco. And I uh, walk in, and there's Coach O'Connor telling me, "Which one are you?" Because I want to know what this year's gonna be. <laughs> after that, after we got the, the ground laid, we, we become pretty good friends. We're good. Uh, and you know what's funny? I actually told that story to Uncle Chris, and he said that was probably the only teacher he ever respected. So, really? Yeah, That's cool. Because he told me. Because uh, uh, Coach O'Connor was a you know mean Irish cuss and used to box all the time, so he knew exactly what he was going to get into. Right. <laughs> That's all I had. I mean, That's Thank you, Charles. Hey, welcome to Patterson Life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah anybody want to mess with? Uh, hey, let me hey. check. Wait, there's us younger <laughs> ones that long. Okay, go for it. It's us younger ones now, Jill. <laughs> Yeah. Their they generation got, mouths got, off and you take wait, care of it. Wait, fuck with my kid. <laughs> I'll be doing that still. Ariel, no, Ariel will fuck somebody up. <laughs> I'll let her take it. <laughs> Ariel? <laughs> Where you at, kid? You go. Uh -oh. Here we go. Oh, Toby. Go closer. This means so much to Chris. It means a lot to me. I'm very blessed with all of you, my family and friends. I love each and every one of you with all my heart, and I thank you for everything that you've done. I always love you, and I'm crying. We said not even so that I'm going to tell you a funny story. <laughs> you got a lot of them, don't you? She's got lots of them. <laughs>